Hi, my name is Jeff Jacobson, and in the SCA, I am Maestro Lot Ramirez. And Sir Avery has asked me to do a signature shot rapier edition. And for this, I'm going to show you my absolute bread and butter combination with a rapier and dagger. I wouldn't necessarily call it a shot per se. It's mostly a setup in which, uh, by use of distance and body positioning, I'm giving my opponent the look of an opportunity to hit me, but I've set a trap for them in two different directions. So no matter where they choose to come to attack me, I'm ready for them and I have an easy defense. So this setup I originally developed utilizing the fundamentals of uh, Giganti's Artful Guards, uh, but uh, I've also found this very similar technique in uh, the 133 Sword and Buckler Manual where they call it Falling Under. So we'll just call it Falling Under. In order to facilitate it, however, with a rapier, I'm going to be using the Italian Guard, which has the body leaned back and the sword well extended. This allows me to take my target and move it as far away from my opponent as possible while keeping my sword as close to them as possible and as much of a threat and engaged in the fight. As well, for this case, I'm actually going to be making an invitation where I'm giving my opponent my sword to bind. So here's how that Italian guard works with my arm extended and my body leaned back balanced with my weight rearward. The other aspect that's important about this guard is how I angulate my body behind my sword in order to facilitate keeping my defense in front of me and limiting my opponent's angles of attack. So the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to use a modified second or secunda in Italian. And traditionally that second would be on the outside of my shoulder defending my outside line. But for this what I'm going to do is actually angulate my body a little bit and bring that whole second and secunda over in front of me so that I'm looking at my opponent through the strong of my sword and my weak is not pointed at them. My weak is actually going to be below their sword in a manner in which they are enticed to bind it. And it's not necessarily going to be a threat, except for if they don't do anything about it, my strong is a threat and I can push that sword forwards to attack them. But for this, initially it's going to be this wide, sort of, or this inside secunda. And then my dagger is going to sit right behind the, the strong of my sword in a triangular fashion. So that the only way to get at me straight is to come over the strong of my sword in between my hilt and the point of my dagger. In this case, you're actually attacking the strength of my weapon, and I can push forwards against the weak of my opponent's sword in an easy defense. Anything that then comes over the outside of my dagger and along the weak of my sword, which is a much better bind for my opponent, is going to be able to be defended easily by my dagger because it's right in the way of where their sword has to come to attack me. So in order to facilitate looking at this, I have my partner here who's going to come help me demonstrate. So Allison is going to take a standard rapier guard. It doesn't really matter which guard she takes. Uh, principally for this, I like if my opponent's in sort of a forward guard, but it can, there's a variant of this can, can be used when my opponent is using a withdrawn guard. But to demonstrate this, we'll have her in a forward guard of any type. Instead of addressing her from the inside, like I might normally with the secunda, what I'm actually going to do is put the weak of my sword under her strong, or at least a little bit of the front part of my sword near her weapon but I want to manage the distance between us so that she can't hit me unless she has to take a step, right? So if I'm here, she can't hit me with an arm extension. She's going to have to reach with a footstep in order to strike me. And this looks like a pretty good idea for her to do. So I'm going to manage that distance, she's in guard, I'm situating myself, now I'm going to bring that sword just a little bit further over. So now if she wants to strike me straight on, she's going to have to go over the strong of this sword. My dagger's in play right where I want it to be, and I've kind of fallen under her sword in just this way, so that it, when she comes to strike me straight forwards, I can easily push that sword aside just by extending forwards and into the weapon.
In this case, if that's where they attack me over that narrow part of my strong, I don't have to do anything except for go forwards. I don't have to do anything with my dagger. My sword is going to pick up their sword. Anything they try to attack wider than that isn't going to hit me because my body's not over there for it to be struck. So the best thing that they can do in this case is actually bind the sword and try to ride through the weak of my weapon forwards, which is a much better attack. So we go back to our guard. I'm here and instead now of trying to strike me over the strong of my sword, she's going to attack in that line over the weak where hand's gonna come bind the sword to the outside and strike over the weak. And this is a much better bind for her and I can't strike back in that time. My sword will get locked out and I will be weak. So this is the thing she wants to do. The problem with this is it creates a horizontal motion of the hand. At the very least, a small shift to the inside. And because my dagger is right there to defend the sword, I'm then free with my sword to bring it under the weapon into the gap that they've just created in the flank. So with a very small movement of my dagger and a very small movement of my sword, I can strike into this line, which is very difficult for my opponent to defend. I'm forcing the sword out of the way, and because of the small rotation of the hand, there's a gap right up through their flank in which I can attack. Alternately, one of the things that uh, Allison could do to kind of at least save herself is as she brings that attack over and binds the sword, anticipating the disengage or seeing it coming, she can then bring the buckler over or whatever secondary, whether it's a dagger or whatever they've got, uh, into that position to block my sword in a way that's, that will save them. But because my dagger's already defending their sword, there isn't really anywhere for her to attack me, which might keep her safe, but is also going to keep me safe. Along with this, because I'm safe, this gives me the freedom to then move my sword around. And when I see that horizontal motion of the buckler coming, I can continue the same motion of my wrist, which started here, and bring it all the way around in an arcing motion to land in behind the buckler. So this setup gives me a tree of options under which anything that my opponent does, I have an easy and ready response to, and I've enticed them to think this is a good idea because I've given them what they want, which is my sword not pointing at them, and they have a straight line shot to try to hit me. But because I've set up all of the defenses, it's a trap. I can also use these same mechanics offensively. If my opponent doesn't want to respond to this trap and they refuse to fall into it, I have still set myself up for a good opportunity to turn the tables and become offensive. Initially, when I come in and I set myself in this position, if they refuse to attack or go through the strong of my sword, I can use that same motion just by extending my sword forwards to put my strong on their weak and attack through their blade. It's a very easy bind for me and goes straight forward with the arm. Alternatively, I can throw a feint to the outside to their elbow. And if they move their hand, the most common thing to do is to parry with their hand and their sword. So when they move their hand to their sword, I can use that tempo and the opening that they're creating to go right back underneath into that flank that I've now exposed. Again, I'm using the exact same motion of the dagger and the exact same motion of the sword. And if they respond as well by trying to defend both the flank 
and the sword arm by using the sword and their secondary together, I can use that same rotation I did earlier to avoid their secondary weapon. So there's a number of different options that I have. I need to remember to manage the distance between us because if I get too close, I won't have the time to make my responses or I really run the risk of getting trapped uh, in a much larger circle than I want to. And this way I can just fit my sword easily underneath theirs and I can use the time of their footstep as the cue for when my defense comes in and I know that I'm going to be safe when this happens. So there's my bread and butter, enjoy it. I'm giving away my, probably my biggest secret here. Uh, if you've fought me, you've probably seen me use this or have me use this setup on you a number of different times. Um, there's always an if this, then that. There's always a what if. There's a lot of different things that actually can be done from here as well. But this is sort of the foundations of the tree. I hope you enjoy it and use it well.